Creating a new culture in a company has much more to do with sociology than tools, statistics, or cloud services. However, we typically rely on technical transformations to create a data-driven culture. In this short talk, I will share with you the main social issues I have found as a head of data in a multinational company to bring you, let's say, a social perspective on the data-driven culture fostering. First, let's define what a real data-driven culture is. Data-driven companies treat data as a strategic asset. Data is clean, centralized, uh, joinable, accessible, so that anyone at the company can leverage data through self-service tools. And of course, the goal is using data to make better decisions. Okay, let's move to data teams. Which are the main social issues found in data teams? Well, quality is the primary concern of data teams. Data teams satisfaction comes from helping the company through data. But when quality is so low, um, then they feel ashamed, unable, frustrated, set a high standard for data quality, invest in data engineering, and have in mind that turnover in data teams uh, is closely related to low quality data. Data scientists hate reporting because it's monotonous and never challenging. We all know that. The same could happen with simple visualizations. Remove this task from them and create a separated team for these minor responsibilities. We expect data scientists to be good communicators, don't we? But we don't prepare the company to listen to them. And that uh, is a significant source of frustration. What's the use of hiring data scientists if we are not going to follow their suggestions and recommendations? Communications between data teams and the rest of the company um, are crucial for a healthy data-driven culture. Focus on good communications. Focus on good interactions. And analyze the motivations behind the bad ones. Nobody likes working on the high pressure, but in the case of data teams, that can lead you to awful results. The best advice here is give them freedom and trust them. That's all. Um, decision makers. Decision makers are responsible for leading the company with their decisions. So they play a very important role in the company. And think of them for a moment. Excellent salaries, great experience, very capable, broadly uh, respected. Um, however, they feel threatened by all this data-driven movement. If we made decisions solely using data, then human decision makers would be useless. The best recommendation here is to make sure you understand and connect with them emotionally. Be empathetic to them. Accept that they won't be able to understand statistics or even a simple graphic. Help them uh, grow and be the best companion. Show them the benefits for their productivity if they use data in decisions and how uh, that can boost the collective productivity. 
Let's be honest with ourselves. Data, statistics, and algorithms don't have all the answers. Data can be messy, incomplete, or biased. And data scientists are humans with limited knowledge about statistics, programming, and data. And intuition is faulty too, of course, always there to deceive us. Decision makers won't feel attracted by a world where data drives everything. At the contrary, they will fight against this world. So let's embrace the best of data and intuition. Join them to obtain the best of both worlds. And what about uh, all the company in general? Well, the, the foremost reason for the opposition to data-driven culture relies on cognitive biases. Those biases generate distrust around the company and affect everyone. Use facts from data analysis results to fight cognitive biases and reduce skepticism. Um, believers, they can be in every corner of your company. The best what you can do is ignoring them, use your energy and time with the rest of the company. Self-service data science has, um, I would say, a dark side. When you open your data and offer tools to analyze it, then some workers might start to believe that data science is very simple. Then your mission will be to convince them that data science is much more than that. And what about new habits that we have to introduce in, in the company? How can we make sure that new practices, new habits are adopted and maintained? New habits should be fundamentally practical and very clear. Prepare samples, offer trainings, supervise their adoption, and persist because new habits take time. Data should lead the cultural revolution. Measure the adoption of new habits through data. For instance, run surveys among your colleagues to collect data, and then analyze this data and show how to use this data to make decisions. We can't impose a culture. We must convince, persuade and be influential. That's very hard, I know. The key indicator to measure our progress is the rate of convinced colleagues. Decide how you will measure it, it's up to you, but make sure you have a clear view of the percentage of people in the company that you still need to convince. It's been a pleasure to contribute to PyData Global 2020. Thank you very much.